Hi there, my name is Terry Hodgkinson Sifu, and I've been blessed to be able to train martial arts since the age of 12 years old. Very thankful for my path and for the learnings and for the many different teachers that I've met along the way and that I've gained knowledge from. And very thankful for the many students that I have as well who I'm able to pass on that lifelong knowledge. A shout out to all my past teachers, the good and the bad ones, doesn't matter because they all taught me something, even if the more uh, difficult or ones that I would consider that weren't good teachers, they taught me you know, ways that it shouldn't be done. So uh, they deserve just as much respect as well. As the good teachers who taught me some great amazing things, it's all a learning process and I think that's what's most importantly is you have to gravitate to what works for you and what the martial arts means to you. On that topic, martial arts means a lot of things to a lot of people and a lot of different things. For some people, martial arts is a very social thing where they go to a martial arts school and they train there and they meet a lot of different people, other students just like them, perhaps from different countries, different religions, different cultures, um, and you get to experience one thing that really unifies you beyond color of your skin, beyond your religion, beyond your country of birth. Martial arts. Martial arts has a very wonderful way of unifying people and going far beyond all those things that differentiate people. Another reason that people train martial arts is to improve upon themselves, to go through the aspect of what the training offers, and really, if you're with a good school, martial arts offers a full curriculum when it comes to personal development. So you're developing not only your body, but you're developing your mind, you're honing your heart, and being able to balance your emotions and be centered within. And of course, let's not leave out the spirit because martial arts brings out a spirit. And that could be a spirit in many different things, not just a spirit of toughness, which is very important, by the way, because I think everybody needs that, you know, internal sort of strength in situations, not just fighting or self-defense, but in many situations in life, that inner strength is very important. But also, as well as in helping and healing, these are attributes of the martial arts that are very, very important. In my opinion, at Chung Fu Martial Arts Meditation, I like marrying them both together. So we do have the aspects of the self-defense and all that goes along with that, but we also have the aspects of rejuvenation and healing principles and techniques that we teach as well. So part of the healing techniques might be as an example, just really focusing in on moving energy through your body through a number of different, what I call our compositions or forms. Uh, the, one of the earlier ones that we teach would be Bhagavad Jin or the eight movements, uh, eight silken movements um, that are really important because they help to rejuvenate the energy and stretch out your, your body. So as an example, touching heaven is the first move of Bhagavad Jin. And each of these eight movements helps to center you, stretch you out, deliver much needed oxygen to all the parts of your body. And to help unclog perhaps stagnant areas in your body which is what the Chinese and the Japanese call qi or qi or qi. So these are different expressions of an internal energy that runs through our body that even Western science ha has proven that we have, you know, a electromagnetic sort of energy that runs through our body. So when you can tap into that and you can help it to flow through your body more evenly and more abundantly, then you can rejuvenate your health and help it heal injuries as well as make yourself a more healthier individual. Not just your body, but also your mind, your emotions, and your spirit. Other people, martial arts might be as an example about the movement. As an example, here's a Shaolin Tai Chi form. 
five animal styles. And I'm just demonstrating the first few motions of this. But as you can see, as I'm going through the motions, it's very meditative. So being able to use motion as a meditation. Of course, there's also sitting meditation. And at Chung Fu Martial Arts, we do a few different forms of sitting meditation, which is expanded upon as you move further into your training. One of those sitting meditations is visualization meditation. And this is where you actually see yourself doing the training. If you were actual a student at Chung Fu Martial Arts Meditation, you would have that theater of your mind and you would visualize yourself practicing movements that you've just learned. And this way you help to prime your nervous system right from the neurons and the synaptic gaps where the, the electricity jumps to form the hardwiring for what it is that you're doing and also moving down the spine and the nervous system so that it activates the muscles into you know whatever motion that it is that you've been practicing so this is a well-known thing uh, that western science as well as the ancient mystics from you know asia have known about this for a very long time the more you can internally see what you do the stronger your your whole performance of it will be and i i can't tell you how many times i use this as a a teenager when uh, I was riding the streetcar to school or um, perhaps maybe I shouldn't have been but it was in a boring math class and I was going over in my mind you know the movements of different compositions katas or forms and it was helping me to remember and to strengthen the order and to strengthen how it's done so very very practical tool is visualization meditation and then there's also samatha which is the meditation of following your breath. So breath awareness. And that is an example would be done where you'd be in a seated cross-legged position or on a chair if you're unable to do a seated cross-legged position comfortably. And you would hold your hands and your back and your head a certain way and you would breathe in and breathe out. And that would allow you to uh, just focus in on breath awareness. So your whole attention is with each and every breath in and out. For some people, it's fancy movements or the what you would call the Hollywood effect, where perhaps you've got high kicks, right? Or you've got spinning kicks, or you've got flying kicks. There's so many different things and aspects that you can do to also make your martial arts flashy. Another aspect of martial arts that some people really like would be weapons. forget that there's also the aspect of learning higher levels of thinking and that could be as an example through philosophy martial arts has been known to be able to pass on very important nuggets of understanding of self-realization whether it would be through Buddhism or Taoism or some aspects of Confucianism so martial arts has a lot to offer many different individuals Personally, I love how diverse martial arts can be. I've trained in many different styles of martial arts, whether it would be Judo, Kempo Karate, uh, Kung Fu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Jeet Kune Do, uh, Sambo, uh, Russian art. So these are different things that I have worked with in my past in martial arts, and I've been to many different places to train, many different countries. You know, in China, I've been to Shaolin Temple. I've been to the Wudang Mountains and trained Wudang Kung Fu. Uh, I've been to India and trained many levels of, of internal uh, Qigong and Tai Chi, as well as meditations. 
So I've really allowed myself to explore many different avenues of martial arts training. And I think one of the most important things is that if you're going to train martial arts, be with a teacher, a teacher who's an example. And there are many great teachers out there, and I've had many great teachers in my past who continue to train to this day. Some don't, some do, but you need to find one that isn't just talking the path, but they're walking the path. So if you have ever thought about martial arts training for a variety of reasons, and there are many more reasons than I have given you here in this short video, get out to a school, wherever a school would be close to you, and start training. If you're in the Toronto area, come and see me. Uh, my school's name is Chung Fu Martial Arts Meditation, and it'd be a pleasure to have a consult with you, and we can talk about what kind of training we do here, and also what you're interested in learning. I teach group instruction, I also teach private instruction. But even if you're not close to me, find yourself a school, go to two or three schools, and check them out and see what feels right for you. The most important thing is begin because you can't get anywhere unless you begin training. So thanks very much and I'm looking forward to seeing you in some sort of martial art in the future and perhaps posting it and saying, hey, I joined and this is what I'm doing. So wonderful. Thank you very much for listening and hope to hear from you in the future.